are here to tell the world just who we are. Shocking females, cause we are superstars. And let me tell you, the bass in your face, the highs in your eyes, so make your nature rise. Cause we are the crash crew, and we rock till you can't survive. You are, that is correct. You are a fastly becoming a YouTube sensation. That's how what, that's how I'm gonna put it. That's how I describe people when I told them who I'm interviewing, because it's right, to, to hear you, it, to hear those words come out of your mouth. It still seems absolutely surreal. I don't know how it's happened. Well, I kind of do actually, but um, yeah, it's it's been an amazing last three or four weeks, especially. Um, and here we are. I'm on a podcast. It's it's crazy. It, it's been. I'm, I'm not like super super famous, but <laughs> I'm famous no. in the painting world, not the podcast world. Um, but uh, oh, it's. You mean, yeah. It's with the, with the um, with I found you because you popped up on a uh, I don't watch a lot of NFL stuff like I do when I'm bored and I'm like it's not football season I need to watch something so you had popped up right when you must have first started doing this because you had twenty thousand followers and that's when I started following you and I I don't follow many people and I uh, I started following you because. When you do it, when you do, and especially reaction videos, almost, I don't watch reaction videos, but the way you, Neither do I. <laughs> it, it, but your title, you know what I mean? Rugly person, you know, play a reacts to NFL. And I was just like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. Why in the 15 years of, in, of the, YouTube have I never seen this? And so I watched it, but your excitement in your like um, exuberance and happiness doing it like made me happy watching it and i'm usually watching nfl films and i'm just like watching it because i just like like i said miss the season but you were so excited and seeing your comparisons and learning it was like so amazing to me and it's still amazing to me when i watch them and i, I just I, watching them, man? <laughs> I, I i i i like i i was at dinner tonight or this afternoon and um i was watching i i, I was watching more of your videos because and what really grabbed me though with you was um, not just those your, your, your reaction videos was your um, I used to coach for eleven years. I was a, I was an athletics or track and field coach since I was nineteen, and okay. your when I was watching um, I don't know anything about rugby by the way. My brother played it. I know nothing about it. I know people who play it for club sports, and I was just like, well, you're doing technique stuff. I love technique stuff in, in when I was training, and so I'm watching like your. Um, I don't know, I think the first one I, I noticed was you, like, uh, um, I don't know, one of the steps you did. I don't know, it was a goose step. Did I write it down? Somewhere. It was... You mean one of my tutorial videos? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and so yeah. I like hearing how people break things down, and you break things down just like I do. I'm like, this guy is on the same breakdown level of training that I used to do with my kids. And so, like, so I felt like eye to eye with you in that, you know, and I, I, your interest in that, is, is amazing because not a lot of people like that's special because not a lot of people I'm not tooting my own horn but not a lot of people can break down a simple move a sidestep the way you yeah. you did in a video well you know I, I well growing up watching rugby I, I it is kind of it is natural to a point but there are certain things certain cues that you can focus on and, and break it down like I did and you know I've I wanted people out there to or kids especially to be able to, you know, feel confident on the field to to bust out a juke or a sidestep. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting messages from from guys who who's probably you know they're forwards in the game of rugby, but in the game of football they'd be linemen, I, I suppose. But guys like that, you know, maybe 250 pounds that are busting out an awesome juke on a, a fullback in our game, which is kind of like a safety in your game, um, and, and telling me about it and telling me that because of my tutorial videos there. They've, they've gone from their school D team to their A team and they're making a rep team, you know, and, and actually, I've actually helped people. And that's that's what it's all about for me. That's what it always, always has been about. Um, and I guess now the, the, the angle my YouTube channel is going is, is from sort of a tutorial basis being quite serious to actually being myself and do, doing these reactions and giving people entertainment now. So I guess that's, that's, that's the reason behind the, the growth. Well, is, be, being you is be, is, is the best. I've gone for it. Yeah, and, and, and doing and being yourself and not trying to be forceful, or being nah. like you know when you when I always thought of reaction videos, it was always people trying to also get a reaction. Does that make sense? 
you know, where you're yeah. just doing it because you're like, I want to learn something. And I take this back to your vlogs oh. because you have a lot of vlogs I really actually enjoyed um, with your, your, ballet, your um, vlog and your, um, your workout ones. And it, it brings it back to, like, you being you. And you just decide to, like, do something that you probably would have done on your own and just recorded it. And that's a, there's nothing realer than that. Well, you know, you know, I, I could have I put up the first video, and I put up the second one and the third one, but then I took a break, so I did three, and it, I think it was Barry Sanders' biggest hits and best jukes, and literally that was just me. I, I thought one day, you know what? I want to watch these videos. I actually want to watch them, but I may as well just put the camera on. And lo and behold, I <laughs> I said a few things whilst the camera was on. I mean, I was quite nervous about it. I put them out there, and the reaction was amazing, but it probably took about two or three weeks for the, the traction to start you know, building. And then when I did realize that it was, I was like, right, well, I've got something here. I'm going to have to, well, I'm either going to not do another one and just <laughs> ride off into the wind and that's it, or you know, focus on this. I mean, YouTube has been a huge passion of mine for, for five, six years now. People don't realize that. It took me at least four years to get to 10,000 subscribers. Um, but that was because of certain things that I'm realizing now, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a, a particular niche, you know, someone would come to my channel and they'd see workout videos, they'd see rugby videos, they'd see, um, fat loss videos and things like that. And I, I didn't have a particular direction. Whereas right now at this point I do. And so people are coming to my channel, they're seeing that and they're hitting subscribe and whether this, I mean, I don't know how many, I don't know how long I can actually keep this thing going for and I know I'm going to need a break at some point but at the moment man I'm probably about 60 or 70 videos in and I'm absolutely loving it still so that's, and, yeah. and that's great I mean th th you have with all your other interests and with with um, your clothing line which we'll get into and that you're starting and you, you, your workout stuff and everything I mean I can see your pain because I run into the issue with for years with photography my thing was is that I was for, I started off in the industry as someone who was known to, for doing music, and then I got tired of doing music because we all grow up and eventually. I wanted to branch out, so I and I started work with more models and stuff like that. But my style was all over the place because I was doing everything that I enjoyed seeing and doing. Which I feel with you, you're just showing your life and what you enjoy, your expression of it. Yours is on video with you in it. Mine was the opposite. I was using other people to right. do it. And I, it, it, it killed me for so long, like so long. I want to say almost like almost a decade where I'm like, I don't, no one's recognizing me for me, but they're recognizing my pictures, you know? And I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be in the forefront of anything, me personally, like my face, but my work, I wanted it to be And what was the problem was, was that like, I, I couldn't find that spot and I'm going through it now as a painter, the same thing. So I know your pain when it comes to trying to find that niche thing that that yeah. sticks, you know. And but the, the fact that you've been doing it for five years is a phenomenal story, and that's what really, really got me. Like this, you're what? You're 27 years old. Yeah. So you've been doing this since you were 22, and you're still yeah. pushing it. A lot of people would have given up after year one. By 23, they said, "I gotta find something else." You didn't do that. They would have, man. They, they certainly would have. And you know what? I, I hate to think the amount of hours and you know, sacrifices I've had to make to get to this point. And I mean, it's, it's just the, the reality of it. Like, I, I, I've always loved YouTube. Uh, you know, ever since it came out, it came out in 2005. Where are we now? 2018. So it's 13 years old, the platform. And it took me eight years of, of watching it religiously. I mean, I don't watch any TV. I, never, I haven't for the last 10 years. It's all YouTube for me. And I, I've always loved that aspect of it, being able to just log on, search exactly what you want, and find it. And um, yeah, that's that. I, I loved it before I became a creator, but I realized that I don't know exactly what my passion is going to be. I don't know if it's photography, if it's music, if it's video, like you say, but I'm going to start this. I'm going to start it. I'm going to put my face out there, which was very, very scary at the start. I mean, I mean, you say that you don't sort of like putting your face at the forefront. Well... Geez, with a YouTube channel, you really got to get over that pretty quick. <laughs> um, yeah, you do. And I, I like to hear that you're, you're doing a video podcast today because, man. What? It's because of you've you. I've got to be honest, man. I, I saw you for the first time. You've got an interesting look. You do. Yeah. And it's marketable. You know what I, I mean? So 
a lot of a lot of people have told me that, but I this I think my problem is with me personally with that was that um, when I okay this always stuck with me when I used to go oh. to hip hop shows and when I was a photographer there was me and some other guy um, photographer his name was um, Top Notch and we we weren't competing but we always knew each other's work we knew who we were working with we always saw each other's shows but when I met fans they all go they all start saying oh you're Al. You know what I mean? Oh, you're out. Like, they knew of me, and I liked it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I kind of stuck with that. And, yeah. you know, but now that I'm like, I got I know I have to put my face out more, and it took somebody to convince me to even get an Instagram, you know, and, to, like, put, like, pictures on that. That's pretty decent. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of help with that. And with, from a YouTube star friend of mine who I used to photograph before she was a YouTube star. And um, so she, she – <laughs> I asked her one day, can you just follow me on, on Instagram so I look like I have, I have followers? <laughs> and she put out this amazing story and blah, blah, blah. So that's neither here nor there. But, but I was able to keep a lot of them because I like to interact. I'm very, I feel like with, with you, like when you interact very well with your, your um, commenters and your people, and that's so important that people don't I realize. <laughs> I've, got to, man, I've got to be honest. That I don't know if you've realized, but there's so many comments now. It's It's... It's literally impossible for me to keep up. So that that sucks, man. Because, geez, that's I, I honestly believe that's what's got to me for me to this point is is giving back to my my subscribers and my my commenters and everyone that's given me support. I tr I've always tried to give back because I didn't have anything. I, I still don't have anything. It's just me, man. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, it's not like I'm <laughs> super famous, like you just said. It's fifty thousand subscribers now. It's it's um it's growing, but. Oh man, it's 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 been such a whirlwind, man. There's so many comments, so many so many Instagram messages. I'm trying, guys. If yeah. anyone's reading, if anyone's listening out there, I'm trying. But to get to that ten thousand, when I could still give back to every single person that commented, I did. Yeah. And it's it's an unselfish thing. I I don't know. I, I deep down, I did probably think that it would come full circle, and I'd get you know a bit of karma out of that. And I guess. I have. Yeah, oh, ab absolutely. I mean, what I do, like for me personally, yeah. because my with my, as I guess my work varies. So certain people like certain work, and I felt the same way when I was up to at the one point I was up to like eight thousand followers. I think I pissed off a, a good thousand of them at one point, and um, but purposely, to be honest with you, and um, it might sound crazy, and uh, but hey, if you <laughs> yourself, that, what are you gonna do? You can't you can't be pretending to be anyone else. No, well that was it. I was just like, you know what? I like people. I, I'm very I. I feel I'm very kind to the people. I hate using the word followers. Um, my admirers, yeah. I, I, it's horrible. It feels cultish, doesn't it? It's like it's like yeah, I'm not like a cult leader here. Um, so I, what I would, yeah. I did was I found out what they liked, and I get, I would have contests for them, and or I'd thank them personally because I'd see the same people all. And you, you do too, I'm sure, in your comments. So I'd see the same ones. I'd personally yeah. thank them, or I would give them something or whatever like if i'm like i have downtime where i get tired of doing the same thing so i need a break or i have old photos that i had printed and i know they're a fan of whoever it was i will send them to them little things like that or you know and whatnot so like just because it that's makes you feel good though, right i mean regardless of the financial you know part of it or anything yeah, like that yeah. it, it makes you feel good yeah it? i mean because it's like you know? you're doing for me you know, it's I don't do this for everybody. I do it for the people who appreciate, it, whether it's five people or ten thousand people, a hundred thousand people, and I'm appreciative of that. You know, and I know how important it would be for me if I had ever messaged anybody or someone like that who I admired had would say something to me. You know, like you even you like people who agree to do interviews and even sit and talk with me. It's a huge deal to me. It really is. You know, like even this right now, this moment here is a big deal to me. You know, and I appreciate all that. I've got to be honest, mate. It's, um, it's as big, if not a bigger deal to me. I, I, I mean, I've never done this before. I've never had an interview. I've never had someone hit, hit me up for an interview. Really, it's, though? So, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the exact same way, man. Well, that's awesome. We're sharing the moment together, you know. And, I mean, yeah. it's, like, I feel like there's a lot of things that, like, I, I really want to discuss it, you know, go over with you, like, you know, in it, like with everything. You know, because I've done the clothing thing before. I've done the training thing before. I'm definitely not as good and handsome look in my, as you, and my body's definitely not built like you. So I was never that type of um, that type of uh, uh, training. I'll take it. You know, <laughs> and uh, what? What? Okay. <laughs> or you don't mind me. This is where my brain goes, but gets scatterbrained. And this is okay. Think of this as I don't really I interview, but I also kind of like prefer it to be like conversational. So. Um, Sure. What is with Australian people, New Zealand people being so attractive? Ah, what 
the guys or the girls? Both. <laughs> Seriously, both. Like, I look at, like, I watch the teams, like, the rugby games that I've seen or whatever, and I'm just like, every athlete's good looking. Even the big burly ones somehow have this good looking piece of them somewhere, you know? I'm like. I don't know, man. Uh, is it the skin? I, I I'm not sure. I don't know. Or maybe it's the happiness because you're all freaking smiling all the time. Maybe yeah. that's it. Well, hey, we're not all smiling, but um, I'm certainly smiling. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I. Well, let's be honest. I mean, before I came to Australia, I came to Australia at age 19. Um, I'd come here for one holiday before that. So but growing up in New Zealand, you always you always think, oh, yeah, the Australian girls, they're, you know, top notch. It would be awesome if you could get an Australian girl. Well, it's, it's the attitude all over the world, apparently. So Australian girls, yes, absolutely, very, very nice. They look after themselves, I've got to say. Um, I don't know what kind of maintenance goes into it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the New Zealand girls, hey man, just the same. To be honest, I don't know. They, they might be a little bit too close to home. I sort of, I branched out for a reason, you know what I mean? But <laughs> no, it, everyone's in great spirits, as you say. It's awesome. Both both countries are awesome to go to. New Zealand is my home. It's my home country. And um, Australia is my second home. So I lived in New Zealand up until I was 19, and I've lived here for the last eight years. No, why it's been you- good to me. And why, and why did you shoot over to um across the uh, the waters there? Oh man, well, <clears throat> running not, away. Well, not a really long story. I mean, I decided. Well, all through school, you know, as as we mentioned at the start of this interview, you're told to go to university, you know, study your degree, get a job, and work till you're forty. Uh, sorry, sixty. Forty years. Sorry, work forty years yeah. till you're sixty. Uh, pay off the family home, and, and that's it. Well. About three months into my university degree, I decided, fuck that. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be doing that. If I do go back to university, it's going to be something that I really want to do. Um, I'm, I'm forcing myself into this degree. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the right thing to do. So anyway, I, I quit. I decided to try and go back into the workforce in Christchurch, New Zealand, which is where I'm from. And at that point, um, and now oh, as well, I think, it was not easy for a a 19 year old who had no degree, no, no qualifications to get a decent job. So I was brought back down to earth pretty quick. And um, I had some debts, unfortunately, from a previous car that I, I rode off as a stupid 17 year old. Um, I'm sure we've all been there. We've all been there. Yes. And so, yeah. And so my mum took me aside. She said, look, look, son, look, son, uh, I'm going to buy you a ticket, send you to Alice Springs. Here's $800 Australian. Do what you can. I don't want to see you back here within six months. Ooh. Good for, no, no, good, no, good for no. your mum for seriously yeah. doing that. Like, seriously. I know. That's ballsy. Yeah, and that's that's and she obviously has clear faith, had faith in you to do something. That's that's a lot more than a lot of parents will do for their kids. Yeah. Like that's a favor she did for you. But anyway, continue. I apologize. Absolutely. Oh man, well, to be honest, she she's actually lived here for two years out of her out of her last eight, so She's seen what it's about, and, and I, man, I appreciate the hell out of her for that. I vividly remember it, mate. We were down, went for a dinner. Um, she, we discussed things. She gave me the plane ticket. She gave me the money. I was flying out in two days. I went and had a few drinks with my friends the next night, and I was out. So, but the, the awesome thing is, is that I got a job within two days of coming to Australia, and it paid almost double what I was going to get back in New Zealand. So, you know, from the first... From the first moment of coming over here, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna head back within that first six months, and I'm still here within, with, you know, eight years later, I'm still here. Wow, so, well, good for you. Thank you to my mum. But absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, okay, why Alice Springs? I, you always say in one of your videos, you said, look, look it up. So I looked it up. Yeah. Talk about nothing. Yeah. You were, were not kidding when you said you were surrounded by desert and nothing. Like, seriously. Man, it's well. Why, look, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I, I had a friend from New Zealand who'd come over here. They weren't in Alice Springs at the time, but they had come over here and got a job um, very easily. You know that that was the draw card was the fact that I could come here. Um, it's not it's not big. I didn't have a car at that point, so I could get around on a bike, which some people still do. It's it's definitely the preferred mode of transport. There's no traffic here. It's fucking awesome, man. Like I do like it. Um, it's just a little bit sheltered, but I came here because I had a friend who, who got a job really easily and lo and behold, I came here and got a job. Um, the sun's always out. 
The winters are really, really nice. The summers are extremely hot and long, but we're right in the middle of winter at the moment, so I'm loving it. Um, but yeah, it's, that's, it was for work, man. Good. It was for work, that's it. Well, you gotta, that's where you get, you yeah. gotta go where the work is, especially when you're that young and you decide not to go to school. Trust me on that one, I know that very well. Yeah. Hence me coaching at 19, so. I, I yeah, get, that's I right, get no, I'm really interested in that. I, I mean, I, to be honest, I'd love, I, I would love to be a coach of some sort. I, I'm getting to that point in life where I'm sort of going from an adolescent into an actual adult, and I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I can do this. I think you can. I, 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 I think you. That's like I said. You, when I saw how you were, your tutorials on on rugby moves and, and such, it, it was very similar to how I approach it. And because I had a, te- I'm, I was a 265 pound man trying to teach uh, teenage boys how to sprint. Okay, so I had oh, to. Hold on. Six one. Okay. So I had to. Okay. I was just known as the strong, you know, throwing coach, and that was it. And I swapped over the, the to to do um, uh, sprinting as well, and to teach kids, and and to then finally turn them into league all stars and things like that, and go to state meets, and which you know are big deals here, <laughs> and um, was a big deal for me, you know, because it's like I it's it's because I had to take something I didn't know, br- study it, break it down to those little elements to make it make more sense to these kids because you t- what's the tip I, you mean you you did athletics in 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 high school right so yeah yeah so what does a coach tell you run fast like that's all they tell you you know and i got tired of that whole run fast crap because i wanted to take kids who you know they're not just to run faster you know i didn't yeah, well, there's, there's such a thing as natural ability as i'm sure you're oh, aware oh, obviously but yeah. to to develop that onwards is, is just makes absolute stars so yeah i mean i I know what you're saying there. Yeah, so I had to break down even like sprinting form and you know how to get a relay together and do all those things and it was and get the kids to understand it too. I can tell a kid to do whatever they, they and they're gonna listen, but if they're not gonna understand why, then it doesn't matter yeah. once they go to college, yeah. you know, and or when they train on their own. And that was the biggest thing. I want them to take whatever I was um, trying to teach them and go beyond that. And a lot of them did, you know. And I got to the point where I was stealing the girls from the girls track team because they hated their coach and they wanted because they wanted to get better and they saw what these boys were doing and majority of the boys that i had were soccer players and the soccer players used to compete against the football players the american football players in 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 strength and in training and the soccer players were better than the football players because the football players had ego and size on in their brain but they didn't have proper training behind them because it was different coaches so i was proud that pound for pound the strongest team in the school was a soccer team. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, um, so you, you didn't do any uh, forty-yard dashes by any chance, did you? Me myself, yeah, I did. In my, oh, no, did you? Did you uh, well, uh, you yourself, but did you? Um, did you coach any people to do that? No, I'm, I'm no. Worth the at the moment. <laughs> well, the, the short sprints are hard to coach. Like the hundred meters is good, but short sprints are tough. It's more of a um, because it's like like you like in one of your videos you had mentioned. You, I don't know if it was a Tyreek Hill video, but you were, talk, you were breaking it down, and you were talking about how up to, like, 20 meters or 20 yards, his head was down. So you got to take that yeah. f- philosophy and drop it, you know, keep it there. But how do you accelerate at the right time at 40 yards and go? And that's the hardest thing to teach because it's so quick because your first four or five steps, you just it's placement. You know, and then after that, it's a matter yeah. of accelerating. Well, it almost looks like you're falling over, doesn't it? I mean, you're literally just on the edge yep. of falling forwards, but you're not. So well, that's how that's part of the one. Be- yeah, one of the training techniques is to, to is to fall forward until you take that step. That's how you find out what your lead step is. Um, right. Well, I haven't done that yet. My one of my one of my suggestions to you is is videotape yourself and count how many steps you take to get from zero to forty meters. And try to cut down one or two steps. So you want to right. strength, you want to lengthen your stride. Is that's the important thing? It, it is is your stride is so important. How tall are you again? I'm six one, so probably about your height. Okay, so so yeah, so you could probably lengthen. I didn't really break down you you, you sprinting it, but you, I could watch a video and break it down for you. But you probably want to lengthen your stride, and you probably could cut down a couple of steps. And um, that's important right there because what you want to learn to do is not run up. You want to run out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, push exactly. and push well, that way. Like that Tyreek Hill video, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, his his back is literally, yeah, you know. It's horizontal yep. the first 10, 10 yards at least. So yeah. I've really got to work on that. And being being a tall little guy, it's kind of hard to get down. So. <laughs> oh, that I that, try being a being, being a fat guy doing that. That's it's even harder. <laughs> trust me, you know. And, and plus, you're doing it without blocks, which is a lot different. So your starting stance is different. And that's on what grass you... as well. There's the cleats um dig into the, the yeah. grass and stuff. So, yeah, man. I, I think I probably could go a bit faster, and, and that excites me, man. Because, like you know, I love breaking things down. I love, yeah. you know, the statistics and things. So, man, I can't wait. Yeah, so that's, that's what. But that'll be my number one thing to tell you: is count how many steps you're taking, and try to take at least one, one and a half out of it. And that's your best bet. And mark them. Well, you know, if you thanks, can mark them, you can do it. You know, it, I don't know if you're familiar with stride checks. Big deal for me when I was running. What I used to train as a runner. No, no. Try, stride checks are like you know, you know, like a ladder, a workout ladder. Yeah. All right. So what you do is you start off really quick. You, your feet go quick, 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 and, they, and, and, and the spaces get further and further and further apart until you're literally bounding to like the last three. All right. So what that does is that will strengthen your stride. So what I used to do when I trained it, because one, believe it or not, at 220 pounds, my favorite race to run was the 400 meters, and because I liked being like the unassuming fast kid. I ran a 59. I know that's not not fast, but at 220 pounds and never training for it. It was like my proudest moment <laughs> running. Absolutely, man. Hey, to get under a minute in the 400 is you That was my goal. Man. And so, but I trained for it in because I knew my strides were terrible. So I would, instead of like a lot of kids when I would watch them or even coach them, they just do this like scissors kick all the way to the end and try to get over it. What I did was I bounded lead knee first. And that strengthened my, my, uh, my length and my stride. And, and, for the, and I used to teach my sprinters to do the same thing because they had these little tiny steps because a lot of them were shorter. So you could do the same thing and bound your way to the end and that'll eventually make you a little bit more flexible, get your groin to pull that far, which, you know, it, being a, a heavy lifter, that you, you're, you're very limited in that. So if you don't stay flexible in those spots. Yeah. Jeez, flexibility, man. I got I to gotta work on that. Well, it was, with, especially with the punting. Now you want to be a punter, right? Yeah. You ever see a punter yeah. follow through? <laughs> Do I? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be a punter. I was doing that for the content, but I did have fun. I'm having fun doing anything. I, I, absolutely. So I, I think I'm going to spot on some team, I'd per, take any position. I personally think you'd be a great safety if you were over here. You probably would have been a safety, hands down. With your size, build, and speed, you would definitely have been a safety. And in, in college, you probably would have been somewhere between a, uh, a an inside, uh, inside linebacker and a safety. Do you reckon a safety... What, what, like, when you think of safety, what is the skill that they have the most that comes to mind just like that? Speed. Speed. Speed and toughness are the two equal ones to me. They're not that actually, they're not really not that fast. But you have to have the, the size. These are the three things that always pop in my head. Size, speed, and toughness. Those are the, they're literally the, like, the, the ultimate combination of all three. I don't know what that would, what that would be in rugby, but... <laughs> It would, well, it's a an guy, amazing player. Yeah, it's the guy who can literally who can dish out the hottest hits at the fastest speed and the most intelligent because you are the center of the defense. In a so sense. who are you watching? My, are you watching your opposite man? Or are you um, watching everything? Well, it depends. Now, this is where you haven't gotten into the whole football. You can, you're going to be learning football, literally, American football, for like the next at least five years. Because, <laughs> seriously. Oh, uh, no. Because when you break it down to actually the strategy of fo- of American football, your mind's going to be blown. Like the playbooks are literally like this thick; they're about six inches thick. And you might so think it's it. yeah. So it's so. What is the safety? Basically, the safety. I, I would call a safety. Um, as long as they're not do you're not double teaming somebody, or whatever. They're basically a ball. Uh, the the second tier ball hawk. So if, the, if they get past the linebackers, you're running up there, they're running the ball, you're running up there full speed trying to take someone's head off, like literally. Yep. You know? Yep. <laughs> so, man, I, honestly, I cannot wait to put on the pads and try and hit someone. It's going to be where are you interesting. Gonna, where, where are you getting pads from? I don't know. I don't, I, I, to be honest, I was going to do a reaction video. Well, yeah. Not a reaction, but a screen recording and, and go on eBay or Amazon and buy my first pair of receiver gloves and pads. And a top to put over it, but I haven't done it yet, so I'm not sure. I will send you Any some. I will send. I will send you some stuff. How about that? I will do that. Really? For you. I will absolutely. I will. I I will send you a, a little starter kit. I, I'll skip the pads because that's those are a personal thing based off of your size. 
And um, you don't want the pads that I have. They're fucking huge. They're huge. You wouldn't be able to move them. They're they're like different linemen, and that's what I was. I was a lineman. <laughs> I watched. Um, oh my god, I watched the. Um, I think it was the 1985 Bears the other day. That that video is coming up. Oh, by re- the, the refrigerator. Oh, the fridge. <laughs> no one stops the fridge from one yard out, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, some of the pads, man. They were literally like out here. They were big they back. Were... <laughs> yeah, back then they were really big, and then um. Over the years, they've gotten smaller because the technology has obviously changed. But they were a lot of neck rolls back then, you know, to keep your head from moving. But when you have a head, a neck roll, I had one, and a helmet, you you literally can only go like this. You can't see left <laughs> to right. So because well, all you all you worried about was right in front of you. Anyway, I was a center, so I just worried about what was in front of me, you know. But it made it harder on defense because it's just so I had to really like turn my body and follow everything, you know. So the, the physical technique changes. For sure. Well, I mean, being a receiver, uh, for, for, well, let's let's switch the offense right now because okay. I mean, the other position I'd love to do would be a, a wide receiver. I think I don't think honestly, I'm, I'm I I went into this thinking, yeah, running back, running back because I I'd, I'd love to run the ball all the time. But you're too God, big. It's brutal. I think you're too tall for running back anyway. Yeah, you've really got to get tuck your head down and, and yeah. get in there. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know who to look up? Who's know. about your size? Is Eric Decker? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's uh, Well, he... I'll get my list. Hold on. Let me put it down. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do, do, uh, do a Eric? Eric Decker, D E C K E R. Got it. He's not that he's not that super great, but he's about your size. And um Okay. But he's uh, um he's been on a, like he was on the Jets. You might if oh, no, was he the Jets or he was on the uh you want probably want to see him on the Broncos. If I remember correctly. Yeah, cuz the Broncos when he had a good quarterback. So that's when you'll see his 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 better stuff. But um, he's about your size. So he's he was a receiver slash slot receiver, mostly a, a receiver. Um, so, but um, <clears throat> receiver, yeah, I could never do that shit. Now that I th- when I think about it, I'm like, I can't see. I don't know how they can see the ball through the <laughs> through the helmet. I don't know heads. either. I haven't, I haven't I haven't I haven't put a helmet on yet. I don't know what it's like. Oh man. my god. I can't find it. Oh, helmets are hard to find too. I don't even know if you could find a helmet. To put on and actually put one on, Jesus, that'd be a tough one. Well, I I, I went to the sports store here. Yeah. Obviously, Alice Springs. You'd be able to get everything in like the major cities in Australia, of course. But Alice Springs is very limited, so mm-hmm. I think either you might see me something, or I'd have to go online. But I bought a ball, and that's pretty much all I could find. Okay, I'll, I'll see what you know. I'll send you a starter kit because I got to ship some stuff out anyway. Um, this coming week that I've been slacking on some paintings, but um. I will send you a static kit, and you can decide from there whatever you want to. Um, whatever you want to. Uh, what a legend! What? A, well, what a I mean, legend. if you're gonna sit there and you're gonna enjoy what my country has, you know, for you, you know what I mean. I think it's we can give back to that in the same way. You know what I mean. I, I love I'll sharing right stuff. I'll, uh, I'll certainly give you a, a decent shout out, and I'll do an unboxing on the on the channel and all that stuff. So, mate, that would be amazing. Yeah, let me, let me see what I I can get you. Put pressure on you, but yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, absolutely, because um, I was thinking that before. I'm like, I, this guy's, like, slacking in some stuff. He, he got a college football instead of a pro ball, um, which is <laughs> not your fault because, you know what, most of the time that's all you're going to find. The pro ball is a little bit bigger and a little bit slicker. Um, and yeah. I will f- – so one other thing I can think I can find you, too, that you might want is a, um, a kicking tee. You want to learn how to kick? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. All right. So you don't I... put anything on the bottom of the ball, do you? It's literally just something that's – like on the top of the ball, just to keep it there. Like yeah, a finger. Yeah, it's um, this it's weird. It's like a tree with a with a thing that just holds it in place. Um, yeah, I had, I had. Yeah. Yeah, they um, because we yeah in, in high school they use a T, and in college in pros they don't they don't use one. They use a, a holder, a personal holder on the ground. But that's gonna that's hard. That's all, it's not much different though from the setup as a um, as a rugby uh kick try. I don't know what they're called. But, uh, no, no, it's 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 not. I mean, and and honestly, man, the more I delve deep into this world of football, the more the more similarities I see. I mean, even just in the scoring, the the the, the point scoring system, system yeah. the numbers. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's similar, man. There's def- like look at the ball. I mean, the ball's pretty much the same shape. There's definitely definite similarities that I'm becoming more and more aware of, and I cannot wait to actually. I'm not going to say I'll be an expert, but in five years I might be an expert. But to actually understand the game more so and be able to you know talk about the differences with a, a 
educated mind on the game of football. I cannot wait to do that. Now, because at the moment I'm, yeah. I'm not. But uh, well, uh, I will. Hey, I mean, your determination. Like now, I'm determined now to understand rugby a lot better. If you can trust me here on that one, you know what I mean? Because yeah, man, that is music to my ears, my friend. I that makes me so happy. Like I, cause now, like I, well, ne- um, Amazon. Amazon Prime, you know, I don't know if you have Amazon Prime. I don't know what they have down <laughs> over there, but Amazon Prime yeah. has has the video stuff, and they have a um a series where they do um all or nothing, and they follow like professional football team. They did like a couple college football teams, a professional team, and this year they did um the All Blacks. So oh. yeah, so I started. I was. I watched that. I just finished it today. I, I watched that. I'm watching it. So I'm taking what I watched in your videos. Try to see it in in your tutorials. Try to see it in those ones because they don't teach you that. You're just watching a team and following them through what, uh, two seasons or a season. I don't understand how the seasons work with that stuff yet. I haven't got that far. Oh, yeah. And um, but I was watching those. I'm trying to see. I can see what things are. are I'm like even the points for whatever the movements, the tackling, the whatever. Just trying to figure it all out and whatnot. But um, yep. it is very, it, it is very <laughs> similar. Yeah. It's a brutal damn sport though. When you get the big guys yeah. and the pros at it, holy crap! Whew. Yeah, yeah. We've well, got. I mean, there there have been a, a couple of Bo Jacksons in the game of rugby, and people have to try and tackle them with no pads and no yeah. helmets. You know how, what I mean? How many broken collarbones are there brutal. in rugby? It's got to be a bunch. Uh, yeah, I honestly, on the pro circuit, you don't hear of it a lot. I've got to be honest. Really? Um, in international games, you don't. But there's definitely got to be a lot of injuries at the um the club level for yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I guess. I mean, we... even in, even in the games that I'm playing at, in Alice Springs, there's it. Oh, it's it makes me cringe, man. There's at least one injury a game, whether yeah. it's a shoulder or a knee or an ankle or something. There's there's always something, man. You know, it, it, it's the nature of the game. Of course, I mean every game. I mean, football, you, everybody thinks because now they got pads on, they can absolutely destroy people, which is you know, the, which is why you see what it, I couldn't imagine what they'd be like if with without. If you ever watch a hottest hitter, hitters video and see the the damage they do, not the newer ones, but the older ones before the rules had changed. Like my yeah. favorite, per, my three favorite football plays are to watch were Michael Vick, Randy Moss, and um, Rodney Harrison, who was a safety. Oh, I've done two of the three. Yeah. I was hoping you'd say yeah. <laughs> But Rodney Harrison, because he would absolutely murder people when he tackled them. He's been, he's, he's the most fine football player ever for all this, because the way he hit people. He did not care. Like, it, he was just so – he's so he's an unsung player that people didn't pay attention to on the mainstream. But that's why I liked him. He just did his business and destroyed people. Came to New England – you know, when people, when, when San Diego thought he was washed up and just wrecked people, and so even even in practice, people hated him because he didn't care. I love that yeah. attitude. You know, so <laughs> if you look, look look him up, just, you know, even in your personal time for a minute and just if you can find anything on him. But Rodney Harrison is just a, 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 what, All right. All right. a header. And he was a safety. A great right. safety. Right. And for workout videos, awesome. if you want to see some sick, like, workout stuff, look up James Harrison. Yes. He's he was a linebacker for um for the Steelers. But this guy is like they call him Debo. You know who Debo is from Friday the movie? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's alright, it's an American thing. Um but anyway, this guy's a, a huge, but his workout videos are insane. Insane. He didn't he didn't there's no off season for this guy. So since for somebody who yeah. likes to work out, this he's the guy to look for as far as crazy like workout stuff and not Tom Brady's, you know, pansy stuff that he does, you know. So, I haven't really, I haven't really seen too many um, NFL type workouts, but of course, with me wanting to get into the game and actually play, I'm definitely going to be checking those out. So, well, I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all athletic based training. So, it's um, you do bodybuilding, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where most of my focus is being based. Yep, in yeah, in the gym. All right, so like it's 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 you know I've seen some of your your um on your your hundred plus day um of what is it weight gain weight tra- what is it? i'm so stupid uh, with, uh, making gains yeah making gains that's thank you yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so in, in that you you're doing a lot of a lot of the similar stuff but eat, nowadays a lot of the athletes do a lot of their own things but um if you ever want to see what um actual like football training would be you'd probably want to look up college stuff and college training because it's more universal yeah. um just so just for like for your own edification if like for 
that coaching purposes or whatever else is to see what they do. Um, big college programs like Florida, Florida State, the Florida schools are huge on that training stuff, so yeah. you can see how, how they train. Um, pro sports, they don't you don't really see much into it. They don't really show it. But college yeah. is the college is the basis of doing it. College sports is where it's at in this country. I'm sorry, it's the most exciting uh, way to, to watch the sports. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I I didn't know that. I had no idea about that at first, but I've I've definitely become aware of it. I haven't seen a whole lot of college stuff, but I can't wait. It's going to be great. It's a, it's a great way to get introduced to play. Like I'm the only one of my friends who are really into it with football, because college basketball reigns king as far as college sports out here. Um, okay. But college sports is just you, you like basketball. Yeah, man. yeah, but I've seen a hell of a lot more of it than I have football, so the reactions. Oh are yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Call, but college sports, <laughs> man, you'll see some phenomenal things. You learn who the players are who, of the future, who the kid, you know what I mean, yeah. and stuff like that. It makes you yeah. very m- more familiar. But you know, the, the games mean so much more. In football, you can afford to lose a couple of games. College, you can't. You see, can't. I didn't. I, I I did not think that would be the case. I mean, I thought. It's college. I mean, people are not going to really care. I honestly thought that, but geez, the with the history of the of the game and that, how how long some of these rivalries have been? Because it's the actual rivalries between two particular schools that means the most. Is that right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, there's this rivalry weeks in special trophies and like the big ones: Ohio State and Michigan, um, Yale and Harvard. Um, uh, I'm going to have to get. Uh, give me well after this. Give me the five biggest college. Uh, rivalries, sure. and I'm going to look them up. Yeah, because look, all right, you okay? Your reaction to when you see stadiums, I don't know, like you like you, you like love the crowds, right? Yeah, like, is that what it is? I do. If you ever yeah. want the, the biggest crowds you'll ever see are all in college sports, college football. They have the biggest stadiums. They hold, hold like, Michigan Stadium holds over a hundred thousand people, sold out every week yeah, that's that they just play insane. there. Yeah, so look up Michigan. Um, How is that possible for a college like? Do they, do, is there any money involved? Like, is there revenue coming in? Oh, a million. Billion. It's a billion-dollar industry. Who Do the players get paid? Nope. They get scholarships. That's a big issue over okay. here. Over here. Okay. Um, there's a good documentary on it if you have a kid to watch it. Um, but it, there's um, – I'll give you the name if you, if you ever want to just ask me. There's um, – but, yeah, the, the, that's the biggest problem. That the NCAA is the uh, National College Association, Athletic Association. They are the ones who control the, the – uh, division one through three f- of sports and they basically take all the revenue for it pu- put it in their own pockets still call themselves a um, basically a charity so they don't get taxed and all that stuff and the kids see nothing and they basically control and have the nay and say on so much stuff so there's a lot of controversy behind that and there's people who see it both ways but i see that the players are making m- m- money for these programs that you know they're the the coaches at the, the college coaches on you know, whatever sport they get paid more than NFL coaches. What? Oh, like uh, uh, Nick Saban gets eight million dollars a year to coach in Alabama. What? A college coach gets eight million a year. If you look up the the highest paid residents of of the highest paid resident of every annual salary of every resident for um for the you know states of the fifty yeah. states, it's more off, uh, often it's a college football coach. What? Uh huh. That's so much money. These well, they must. Well, it must be a, a. They must put a hell of a lot of effort in. They, do they go home? I've no. heard of coaches sleep on site. <laughs> when the season's in and it's 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 pretty it's pretty hectic. You have to be. If you want to be the best, you want to make that eight million dollars a year. Obviously. Yeah. You know and that it, it's your life, and that's the hardest thing that people don't realize. Like even me on a low end coach on a you know small program here, you. Like when you mathematically figure out the low pay and what you're making because all your downtime that you're actually spending learning programs, coming up with lineups and things like that, you're literally making like five dollars an hour. You know what I mean? In essence, because of all the extra time you're putting into it. Now, as a professional, could you imagine you're doing 18 hour days, you know, because you have a week to figure that stuff out? It's insane, absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, that's well, I think that's crazy that a coach can get eight million and their top players get nothing. But Business. they're conditioning themselves for this awesome fucking. They could be well. I mean, they want to get to the draft, don't they? Is that is that like where they're all? Do people are, are some players completely satisfied with college and don't want to play professionally? Yeah, there um, there are some people who I could see doing that. Like, okay, for instance, like a few years ago, there was a guy on Florida State. He was a road scholar. You know what a road scholar a road scholar is? 
No. It's a special. It's a special. Um, it basically it's like it's almost like special scholarship slash degree or whatever. Um, honor. Only like two students in all the country get. And they get, they go over to England and they get this honor thing or whatever. I don't know specifically what it is. Um, I don't want to be that stupid on my own podcast, but um, it, it's so if you're one of two students in all of the United States schooling systems to get this, you know you are you gonna go play college football and risk getting I mean professional football and risk getting hurt, damaged, dying in the future, or whatever else, or are you gonna go off and be a rocket scientist? You know what I mean. Um, so there yeah. are, yeah, and there are players who understand that, like, that they're not good enough to make it there. But every, sure, I think everybody would want to try and get there because the team's allowed, you know, about about a hundred players to start off practice with, and they have to break it down to fifty three. You know, so you, each team doing that, so you get fifty three people on a, players on a team for each season, and then you get a practice squad team, which I think it's like six players. I can't remember exactly. Um, so they're oh, able, man. yeah. So like, there's yeah. so much people. So there are people in there who like, yeah. I'm tired of it. There pe- there's plenty of people, like, kids that I've met who played, and they're like, they don't even care about even watching football because they had enough yeah. of it in their life, you know. But absolutely, yeah, yeah totally, you know. That's, I guess it's a bit different for me coming in at age 27, completely new. It's it's <laughs> very it's unique. I guess that's what people are are jumping on on board the the journey. Well, I, uh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, like you said, people here, we like to share things. And we're passionate about our sports. It's our ultimate escapism. Now, being from Boston, where between Boston, New York, uh, the, and probably Chicago, the two biggest, the three biggest markets that, that are like basically all sports, you know, because we have, yeah. you know, we've won, I think this decade, not this decade, but since the 2000s, uh, the city of Boston has already won 10 championships professional in professional sports. You know, and where every other city has maybe two tops. You know, so okay. like we live and breathe. It. Yeah, you know, like we, you, you, if you, you're here, you have to know about sports if you grew up here. Yeah. You know, whether you're a fan of it or not, like it's just the way it is. You know, so I mean, it's just the same way. I don't know. Is this a, is rugby like that in New Zealand and in Australia and all that yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, we're exactly the same, man. Um, whether it's New Zealand or or uh, Australia, whether it's rugby, cricket basketball soccer tape could be table tennis could be golf anything you know we're pretty sport mad you're either one, you're either on one side or the other i think you know it's uh, personally i got i got into sport because i mean i'm competitive at the end of the day like uh, i'd only want to play a sport if i was good at it or i thought i was good and i wanted to win and that that sort of attitude has sort of you know waned off a bit in the last few years but i can definitely feel it coming back man <laughs> and um uh, yeah it's yeah, rugby is huge. Rugby is a religion, man. I don't know, like, what is the top sport in the U.S. overall? Is it baseball, uh, uh, basketball, or football, or is there another one? I think as a fan, it's football because, but as when you're growing up, it's baseball because you can play it. You can't play football growing up necessarily for everybody. Yeah. So that, I've it, never played baseball. I haven't either. I couldn't swing a bat if my life depended on it. You know what I mean? I could probably knock somebody's knees out, but I can't, I can't swing a bat or throw a ball at all. But I can throw a shot put well, in a discus yeah. and a javelin, you know? You know cricket, right? I do. I know cricket. The, the, the game that never ends is what I call it. <laughs> well, I used to think football was the game that never ended. But, um, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> like, well, cricket literally can never end at some point. Like, it can be like six hours long. I'm like, what are you kidding me? It's a five day game. A, t- a test match is five days long. Oh, mate. yeah. See, like, that's what it's like. I'm like, I don't, it's insane to me. Like, so I, I don't, I, I'm not too. I, for when I lived in Asia, I followed it a little bit because I'd see it on TV. And I, I got out of it there because I just couldn't fathom. I can't fathom. Like, I, I don't like video games that don't end. I don't even play video games. But the thing that there's video games that don't end just kill me. I, need, I needed something to shoot towards, you know? So to feel like something's going to be five days away, a week away, whatever the frick it is, I can't do it. Can't do yeah. it. You know? But I, I, I Yeah. I, so I say, I'd say it, soccer's huge in America, too, for when you're a kid. And then um, because it's easy sport to play. But soccer, yeah. baseball, growing up, it turns into football. And then from there, it's mostly football. Um, if I had a kid and I never planned on having one, and congrats, congratulations on your daughter, by the way. Um, Thank you, man. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, it, Four and a half months. Old. Wow. Let's see, I, I just, my, my brother just had his first, um, year, year and a half, what is it? Yeah, a year and a half ago. So, 
Um, I leave it to my brother to have the kids, and I'm just going to skate away and do my thing. Um, God bless you, all your parents, because all my friends are parents, except for me. Um, <laughs> Same it, here. It, <laughs> what? Not anymore. <laughs> nah. so, but, so if I ever had a kid, though, baseball is the way to go, man. If you want to, like, the money in baseball is absolutely absurd if your kid's good at baseball. I'm talking, like, they're looking at Bryce Hopper who's not even playing well right now, that in the offseason he's going to get a half a billion dollar contract. What? Yeah. 500. Over how many years? 10 years probably. Oh, fuck. Jesus. Can you imagine? <laughs> Could no, you... I can't. Like, I, like, hi, I just signed this contract that says $500 million. And that doesn't include the endorsements. Would probably put him over a billion. Well, it's like, well, I mean, what did LeBron ja- LeBron James just left um, the Cavs, didn't he? Yeah, he's getting the Lakers. Forty-eight million dollars a year, forty-nine million just to play basketball, and not even the rest of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Like, perfect man, it's now how's the pain over there? With realize what it's like over here because our biggest, you know, I guess our biggest revenue drawing sport would be, well, actually, it's. It's different from New Zealand to, to um, Australia. New Zealand would be rugby union, for mm-hmm. sure. But then you've got another sport called rugby league. I don't know if you know the differences. But no, I'm still it's the same, ball, same, same field size, different kind of different rules. To be honest, rugby league would be the most similar game style to American football because we stop after every tackle. It's like a down. You know what I mean? All right. But yeah. we've got six tackles okay. to try and get to the end of the field, not four. And on the last one, we can kick, um, but we can also retain the ball too. So, uh, honestly, well, I pro- I'm going down a rabbit hole now. I'm not going to try and uh, <laughs> talk about this because hopefully I can in the future better when I know the rules better. But, yeah, rugby league okay. um, is more so an Australian sport. Rugby union is more so New Zealand. But they're both very, very popular in both countries. So Okay. Yeah. Now, the pay for yeah. the athletes, though, if it's like, what are the like, all-black athletes? With, like, oh, what kind have you heard of any athletes? Do you know any? Uh, or... See, um, just from just from um, Amazon alone, there was um, one guy I liked, but he kept getting hurt. I, his name was like Nihi or N- I, I, I don't know. It was a weird name, okay. like N I H I or N E H E or something. I don't know. Um, somebody Is that ca- Milner Scudder? Is that his last name? Uh, yeah, it Is was he a good side or... It was a. Uh, he was fast as all hell. This kid was like zing. Down the field. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. He, he had moves. Um, some kid, McKenzie, Brandon McKenzie or something. He's a tiny guy. He's yeah. like 5'8". I'm like, that dude could work. He's playing fullback for um for the All Blacks at the moment. And uh, Damien, I think. Damien McKenzie. Oh, maybe. And, yeah. Uh, well, talking about numbers, um, you're going to absolutely, I don't know what you're going to say to this, but, yeah, our top. Our top All Black, top superstar goes through all this shit, all the training, all the hits, everything. They would be lucky to crack a million dollars a year. Uh, is that gold yeah. fire? Is that a million dollars like there? Is it different? Like as far as? Oh, it's it's oh, it's a lot. Le- it's it's less, man. Yeah. So that's probably about six fifty US. Wow. What's the league minimum over there to play? Um. Well, you've got like the practice squad, like you say. Yeah. Um. If you're not playing, you're just training. Yeah. So that's your full time job. I'd say you'd probably get a base of about, I don't know, man, 80 maybe? 80 or 90 grand, 100 maybe? All right, yeah. 100 grand. If you're, on the, if you're on the team, if you're a starter, but you're not a star or anything, I'd say, and this is like, this is club level. This is um, uh, like a national competition that they have. I'd say 200,000 maybe. Yeah, I, le- I think I could be sure. Couldn't I, be sure. I, anyway, yeah. I, the league minimum on uh, there's a veteran minimum and a league minimum. Um, I believe is somewhere around like seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Practice squad members make I think thirty grand a week. A week? No, it can't be a week. <laughs> no, is it? It might be a week. Thirty a week would be a million and a half, would it? Yeah. At the end of the se- but they're, they're not always on the practice squad. They're just there like. Back and forth, back and forth, um, but I could be wrong. But it could be ten grand a week, something like that, um, something higher than going out and working. A, you know, uh, being a bricklayer. Um, yep. But the money's in it, though. Like I mean, between merchandise, like you know, me buying these jerseys yeah. and these hats, and um, the tickets cost a fortune. Um, 
You know, I mean, that's where it all comes from. It comes from the fans. I mean, the season's only, you know, 20 weeks long. But, you know, 16 weeks or no, 17 weeks technically, but 16 weeks for a regular season. But the money that goes into that between the, these, the NFL makes off of um, the channels, be, like pay them a billion dollars just to, you know, play, you know, half a season at a time and stuff like that. You know, it's like the money yeah. is, is insane. So it goes back and then it's just, you know, and same thing with baseball. Baseball's got 162 games a year, 80 Okay, 162, I want 81 games at home, you know, so you have 30, we'll say 40,000. Each team plays 160 games in a season. Yeah, in baseball. No. Yeah. No. What? Yeah. Yeah, like the Reds, How like. How often do they play? Right. You'll have, you, you, you have to have a, uh, a minimum of three days off a month in baseball. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, obviously, the physical demands are not the same as the game of rugby, right? Certainly not. But the mental demand, because you're traveling. Now, you're going from, you might, you'll do a home stand for, say, we'll say eight games, and then you're on the road for a month. So you're traveling from time zone to time zone. You know, it's not a 12-hour flight to Argentina um, for a game, which is insane to me, or South Africa or whatever. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's night after night. You'll finish a game and then go on a plane and go to the next one. Like, in the NFL, they have games over in, in England – now four times a year so you out yeah. you'll fly over they'll make decision or the patriots they'll play it smart and they'll have a game um like last year they had a game in i don't know seattle or somewhere california and then they stayed over there because they had a game in mexico the next week so they just stayed there rather than flying three thousand miles back and then another three thousand yeah. miles but you know what i mean things like that but um so yeah. are, these, are these regular season games that they're having overseas, or are they exhibition yeah. matches? They're regular season games. Um, it's what, one team has to forfeit a um, a home game, like in their home stadium. But there's a revenue right. builder there. The Patriots are super popular oh, there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jaguars yeah. play there every year, and they always destroy whatever team they play, which is odd, regardless if they're good or bad. Um, so those are the type of things that, as a new fan. When you you can pay attention to um, is the 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 teams at the tell that you get to watch are usually the the teams and the matchups that the NFL wants you to see that they they deem as should be good. Um, yeah. You know what I mean. So that that help that can help you in a little bit in your research in in learning the sport. Like why is this team good? Why are they playing? You know why am I seeing this team? You know like you part. Have, have they have they come to Australia? I think they might have. No, uh, I think they might have done a, a visiting thing because I know they did. They're trying to get something over in China at one point. Um, maybe like, I, but flag football worldwide is super popular. The NFL runs. I've seen a, it. I don't. The NFL actually has a league now that um, that are run by former players and stuff. I don't know why. I don't know. If you guys must have a flag football league down there. We mu we must do. I've actually I have seen a lot a bit of that um, that tournament that's on at the moment. And um, it looks – how many players? Is there seven on team or something? It's seven on seven, I believe. I haven't yeah. really watched it, looks, it but yeah, it awesome. <laughs> you should try it. Like, it's a big um, youth thing. If you can find a league around there or start one, um, there's a – Oh, man, it sucks. It sucks, man. There's nothing here. Really? There's no there's – no, no, there's, there's no, well, honestly, there are a lot – there are quite a few Americans that live in Alice Springs due to – there's a, a, a military oh, uh, okay. base – yeah, so they come over here on like two year, uh, two year job visas, I guess, and, and then go back to the US. But there is quite a few US people here. It's just I don't really know any. I guess I could put a, a little shout out on Facebook or something, try and get some yeah, people see together. Is... But there's no leagues to actually go and join a team here. No, oh, unfortunately. Okay. Well, there's a, um, if you can ever catch it, I'm sure there's a video of it on YouTube. There is a new move in flag football that you, it, they, I've, you, I've never seen before, and you like the jukes oh. and stuff like that, it's like a vertical juke. And since, <laughs> since you got to grab the flags, these guys are doing a duck. Oh, Have yeah. you seen it? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. you got to be yeah, like, yeah. yes. Like, they'll, they'll squat down and do this run on the <laughs> on their, like, like, I'm like, it looks like a dog scooting. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, my. But the, the, I'm sitting there thinking, like, how do you do that at the speed that you're doing it at? And not blow out a knee. Like my knees would just be a pop. I know. Boy, that my I I just imagined that in my head just then, mate. That's that's what I can imagine you happening. Do it. As you come back up or something, it's just gonna pop. But yeah. that's strength yeah, right there. It's that's a vertical joke. I never thought I'd ever see one. But yeah. there you go.
<laughs> I like to see you try and do, try those those uh, training out in a tutorial. Do football <laughs> tutorials. How I would do it. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, there's so there's oh, there's so many. I mean, once I get through the reactions, yeah, I'll get down to the field and start doing that. <laughs> now, are you ever going to get into the um, the studying the uh, like when you watch a game, understanding what exactly is going on? Well, to be honest. You'll probably be happy about this. Recently, I just watched my first actual... Well, it wasn't a full game, but it was the Super Bowl 51. So I watched all of the plays. So I think it was condensed into about a 20-minute video, and I watched the whole thing and saw the comeback, and um, it was awesome. But it gave me the opportunity to sort of start seeing a few things. Did you watch the turning turning point one, the NFL Films turning point? Where they Uh, they explain the plays and, like... in certain no, places. Oh, okay. But, but um, I I've recently found this guy. I can't remember what his name is. He's he's recently hit a hundred thousand subscribers. He um he really really breaks down the players and oh, okay. he does scouting reports and things like that. Nice. I don't know. I I, I don't really watch. I usually watch watch like the NFL film stuff in your shit. That's about okay. it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll definitely be getting into that, man. I can't, I okay. can't wait, but. I've got, a few, I've got a few more reaction videos to go, oh, yeah. and then we'll be cracking. Oh, yeah, that. plenty of time to do it. I was just curious because it gets like it does <laughs> get extremely complicated. Because um, you said you bought Madden, right? Yeah, oh, my God, I'm getting confused with that, yeah. So, <laughs> well, just yeah. like honestly, Madden's a great way to learn the sport. If you, if you don't worry about playing it and watch and see the schemes when they have like the nickel, the dime, and all those packages, and that way you can see how they're all the, all the positions. That way you can understand – like what what it is like what a spy is what like a, a man coverage is what a zone coverage is and all that stuff on defense like that's why if you ever want to learn it, my point I think on that was what the reason why watching Tom Brady is so boring like you didn't have much to say in your reaction video because there isn't much to react to Tom Brady because the, the watching Tom Brady and like a Peyton Manning even though Peyton Manning had a really strong arm did a lot of long balls is they break down the defense faster than the de- they know what the defense is doing before the defense himself knows what they're doing. Yeah. Like so, yeah. you you be, to be able so to, to watching them on an, uh, that type of level is totally different than watching it on a physical level. So that's what's so great about them, you know. So that's understanding the sport and like to that degree of understanding plays, which gets confusing as hell. Have you ever heard them call a play and how many words are involved <laughs> in one play? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's absurd. I sit down like, what did he just say? He's, he's like eagle. What actually this. means something. Is it is it the last word or last number? That no, what happened? That? What happens is you have like I don't I don't know this for sure like anymore, but it was um they have like the package, which will say it would be like eagle. Then they have like well they'll say, if they say a letter like X, which will be you know then so each thing will represent something for the linemen, something for the receivers, something for the backs. So you that's why you'll see some people break off quick. So they hear what they're gonna hear. Like a number will represent, um you know. Where we'll say where the lineup is, three guys on one side, two guys on the other side. The linemen will hear how they block. They have to block. So they're blocking scheme. Are they blocking for a pass? Are they blocking for a run? Are they blocking for a seven step drop? Are they blocking, you know, for, th- for things like that? <clears throat> you know what I mean? And so, so that's what, so the most. That's why the, the quarterback has to be the smartest guy. He has to know what everybody's doing, you know. In, in the, the the you know, if it's a passing play, you have to know the route. So the route will be mixed in there mixed with a number you know it's it's you just have to know what your key point is so that's why that's why they're so long you have to know those things you know it's 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 absurd but i couldn't imagine having to memorize all that these quarterbacks in college they're um not only learning a couple hundred plays but they're they're doing their studies as well i'm sure you have to i mean yeah a lot of you get there's a lot of controversy about jerk off classes and people taking these bullshit courses and getting um you know free grades and all this stuff along the way, um, but you know majority of them aren't. The smarter, better programs realize that the bigger schools they have rep- they, they have rep- reputations to uphold, and the, the students actually still want. It. There's a lot of students who want to do well, and yeah. um, you know in high school it's the same way. You can't you can't graduate high school if you don't have good grades. No one's gonna take you. You know even if you're a good athlete, yeah. you're not gonna be able to play. You know, because I like that. Yeah, and, and, and it's a big. The thing is, the NFL has a program set up too that if you leave early, like the, you leave like your junior year for the draft, get drafted, 
that they have a program for the off season for you to go back and fi- finish your classes and get your diploma and stuff. Um, yeah. So they're good with things like that. But yeah, you have to do classes. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, and a lot of pro teams look at that. It's not like basketball. Basketball, they don't care. They do one and done, and you, that's it. You know, uh, I think it's silly. I don't think you're teaching kids or human beings many skills by doing that, life skills. If the person gets yeah. hurt, you know, they don't teach them anything about balancing money or a checkbook or responsibilities. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You know, well, you've heard horror stories of people blowing their whole fortunes, haven't you? Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, a lot of them on betting. A lot of yeah. these pro athletes like to bet all their money away. Like, how did you lose four hundred million dollars? Like, seriously, I I could I, I you know I couldn't imagine losing four hundred dollars. You know, whatever my four hundred million. It, it makes me sad, really. It's a yeah. joke, but that's just the reality of it. When you're young, say you got you're nineteen years old, you're you're you, now you signed a contract for you got ten million dollars in your pocket, and yeah. you came from a, a a culture where nobody understood that amount of money. So now you don't know what to do with it except buy the stuff that you've never had before for everybody you've ever known, which is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like it's it's a sad culture to be in. But, you know, they do have symposiums and stuff to teach these kids, but it's up to them to listen. You know, it's a, it's the sad reality with sports. And, you know, but that's like that with anything. If you go off and like, yeah. you know, what what your clothing line takes off and I, I, I hope it does for you. You know, you'll reach a point where you, you'll be so overwhelmed that you went from a twenty thousand dollar company to next year you're half a million dollar company to you know hopefully the year after that you're a million dollar company. There's a huge difference between a twenty thousand dollar company and a million dollar company, and no one's ever taught you the difference. You know what I mean? You're learning as you go. You know what I mean? So yeah. I hope that's a problem you have. Yeah. Someday. Oh, I hope so too, man. <laughs> um, that was only up until recently that I that. Whether it was going to be clothing, whether it was going to be uh, you know electronics, whether it was going to be something else, it, it's it was building a personal brand. I mean, this is that's what it was about. I don't know if we'll, we'll probably talk about that in a bit, but um, it wasn't necessarily going to have to be clothing. But I've always liked clothing, and there's a lot of clothing brands out there that I'm thinking you're successful, but your clothes look like shit. How? <laughs> you know, let me let me try this myself, and so that's what I did. No, that's so. the, that's how it starts. I mean, you buy. You know, for me, I was when I started making T-shirts, I got sick of the fact that everything looked like a fucking T-shirt. I like stuff for women. I'm big on women and what I like to see women in. Um, so I decided taking t- guys' T-shirts, blank ones, painting them myself and customizing them myself. Like I liked how they looked to fit a certain way and do whatever. So that's what I did for a while just because I wanted to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I still have, I was doing it on my, for my own photo shoots because I was sick of buying stuff that I couldn't get. Or that I imagined in my head that didn't exist, you know. Yeah. And like for me, workout clothes, wow. I tried everything. I, I, yeah. I wear. Well, to be honest, like I, I didn't even real, I didn't even really realize this before, but the, the the look that I like is the football the football top, man. It's baggy, you know. The the sleeves come right past the bicep. They're not freaking tight as hell like up here. You know what I mean? Like I like I like that look, and I also like the, that kind of stuff. On a girl, like you just said, so a yeah. baggy jumper, or a baggy hoodie, or that sort of a tomboy look. So at the yeah. moment, that's that's where we're hitting it. Um, oh, perfect. Yeah. It's a great idea. And yeah. like there was, um, like there was a, even believe it or not, up until I want to say, I will say five years ago, very recently at least, at least within this decade, the NFL they wasn't making. Nobody was making. Uh, Nike has the NFL contract now, but they weren't making clothes for women. Can you believe it? Like the mar- the biggest market of buying ch- clothes. They didn't have one. So an yeah. actress, Alyssa Milano, started her own line licensing out, you know, getting the licenses to sell that stuff and it became like the biggest, you know, like I'm like, how do you, how does nobody understand that? It was beyond my comprehension, you know, in doing that. But <clears throat> I mean, I break it down to like, I just want to, co- I like, I got so tired of whatever what was, nothing looked good on a bigger guy that I cared for. Yeah. You know, so I had to like go and start cutting up my own regular cotton stuff and whatever else would fit how I fit. You know, like I like certain materials that Adidas made on sweatshirts, so I was cutting those up for me. You know, yeah. and, and things like that. You know, so I totally get you on. It's whole, yeah, it's a whole new learning curve for me, mate. Um, as far as qual- uh, the fabric quality, what what they're called, you know, what c- certain jargon in the the clothing world. So, so hard. It's I'm getting, so hard. I'm getting. <laughs> 
I've got a lot of things on my plate at the moment, man. But no. it's all good. No, it's great. Busy. It's a, um, my dad was a, um, he lived over in Thailand for a while and, um, for actually a long while. And he, he, he does a lot of, um, he find, used to find manufacturers for anything. I do, I, I'm good friends with this business partner over here. And I remember I asking him, I go, what is it that you guys make? He goes, we don't say no to anything. We'll figure it out. We find whatever. So if you ever need, like packaging's their big thing that they spend a lot of time on. Um, if you ever get to the point where you need to fig, find, uh, try to find, I don't care, manufacturers or whatever else and whatnot. Yeah. You know, let me know, and I can t hopefully try and point you. Oh, man, point it's been, it's, I've, I've been struggling. Um, I've found, you know, you know, Alibaba.com. Mm -hmm. That's where I started, basically. Okay. So, um, but. So, what do you look? What do you, are you looking for? Textiles? Is that what it is right now, mostly? Well, I had, well before I could approach anyone to actually get something made, I needed tech packs, right? Yep. Well, I, at first, I didn't even know what one was. Mm -hmm. So, um, over the last few months, I've been getting those made. So I have tech packs for six garments. Yeah. These are the first six garments we're going to be bringing out. And at the moment, I'm going through an Australian company who deals with manufacturers in Thailand or, or China or Bangladesh. They get everything made. It gets quality checked in Australia, um, all packaged, everything like that. And then they send those boxes to me wherever I, or my distri distribution warehouse or whatever. So. It's going to be a higher price because I'm not directly going through the, the manufacturer, but as far as communication, as far as if things go wrong, um, I'm dealing with an Australian company. Yeah. So for this first round of, of stuff, it's going to cost me a bundle. Uh, hopefully, I can make a bit of profit on it, but that's not what it's about. It's about getting a quality product yeah. and, um, and having people happy with it, man, because yeah. if I could do all the marketing I want, all, all of the marketing, all the promotion, everything, if it's not a good product, People aren't, people aren't going to be happy about it. And I think that a successful business is built on return customers. Um, Absolutely. And that's what, I want to, that's what I want to try and get, man. So, one, of yeah. the, one, of the best, um, one of the best learning things that, that I didn't personally go through, but through my when – I, when I was – like I like to study where things are made, what the process is, just for fun when I see something. You know what I mean? I want to know where it came from, why, and who's manufacturing. I think obviously you knowing my father and going through that – with him and living in Thailand and knowing that like Reebok or Nikes were made there or whatever else, um, certain ones were there and then whatnot. So anyway, in learning about knockoffs and stuff, I wanted to know about those things. So there's a company here in America that is known for making the world's best sweatshirt. And that's basically all they, they probably make other things, but all they're known for is a sweatshirt that takes about, I don't know, six months to get. Because they can't keep up with demand, and this has been on going on for about three or four years now. They just did Where's good. At, I don't even remember because I, I wanted to buy one. I'm like I was too impatient to wait to wait. But um, yeah. it was uh, and it's just it, they, that's like they I do no major marketing, just a new story that just kept them going after that. But that people yeah. would, it was all word of mouth. They found one product and just did it well. Like they researched and yeah. whatever else, you know what I mean. That just that always blew my mind, you know, when, when when I saw that. As far as clothing was concerned, you know. And so what? So so it, it took off from a news story, you're saying. No, I think beforehand it was impossible to get. It was one of those like you know um, I don't know if you have LL Bean down there or whatever else. One of those kind of bougie like I I go hiking, but this jacket cost me four hundred dollars type of shit, and okay. um, but people just knew in that that, that circle. So it was so hard, and it just kind of rolled from there. You know what I mean? It's got to be a reason why, though. It's got to be, like, top quality or something. Oh, it is. It's got to be. I don't know what it is. I wanted to get one and find out, but like I said, I was way too impatient to wait, <laughs> to wait which is Six stupid. That's, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> you think so? So, I mean, talk about knowing you have work for a while, you know? Yeah. So, like, I look yeah, up well, stories like that all the time. It's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I'm sure you've researched companies who have started off where you're starting off, you know, the, the, the yeah. same way, you know? A lot of yeah, I mean, a lot of my research is, is through YouTube to, to get real life experiences from other people who've done it, and that's that's why I like YouTube so much, man, because it's real. But some people are real, some people aren't. But um, you can sort of see through the, the cracks, I think, and, and sift out the, the real ones. Here's a um, I'm gonna show you a, a book I, I I always keep in my studio. Hold on a second, so you can look it up. I gotta be honest, the screen has uh, it's um. 
It's uh, frozen. <laughs> is it? Yeah. That's weird. All right. So you can't see my book. All right. Well, can't anyway, it. it's called Skull, uh, Cult Streetwear. And it's a okay. hist- it's a history of all the major um, United uh, streetwear companies that started in the United States all the way from the eighties to about I want to say maybe about ten years ago. So it gives their backstory and everything else because they all started where you are, not knowing a thing and just starting off. It, it's so inspiring to hear the stories because a lot of the companies that are around now, a lot of the companies from when I grew up, um, that I recognize the names of and they're knowing why they did it, what their influences were and whatnot. Um, some of them are still around, so you could actually research them and see how they're doing and stuff. But um, streetwear has always been that, been like that, you know. Yeah. It's like you know, Under Armour yeah, has a story yeah. like that too. Nike has their story, but those are too big. You know what I mean? Like I want to know people who keep, keep, you know, I want like you, like who, who like can do it like from home. You know what I mean? And started that way with like you know five guys coming to the their apartment, just printing stuff out and doing whatever they could do. You know, and not giving yeah. into um, certain you know norms like you know one company that I, I like called the hundreds they um their celebrities wear this stuff and they've never given them t- any celebrity endorsement stuff any of the clothes away for free you know they just do just stuck to their guns did the way yeah. they did it and they started back in the early 2000s you know in you know in the apartment and whatever else and they're you know they're huge you know so yeah, man, you gotta you gotta believe in yourself Oh, for sure. You know, and you obviously do. If and like, you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in your product. It's not going to work. No. Yeah. And you might need, to, you might have to be a little bit delusional at first, but who cares, man? No, I Make mean, make it until you make it. I say. <laughs> it, it, well, if you're not delusional, then you're not going to have the vision. It's as simple as that. That's where no, they come from. Exactly. Man. You know, you're not going to dream that big dream at first, and it, you know, it seems completely unachievable. But man, just take the small steps, and it starts getting. You, you you have to be a little bit crazy in any form of putting yourself out there and investing in yourself in some way to or in, or convincing other people to um to take something that is seems so um so normal and regular in making it your own and and, and believing in it and because people will always say they believe in you but people they won't always do anything for you. And it's a huge. Yeah. And it's a huge lesson that I learned that I had to go and do things on my own because my friends are great friends. Don't get me wrong, but they're not going to do shit for me if I need them to, you know. Yeah. And yeah. They, they all everybody wants to work with you, but no one actually wants to do any work. So I said, screw it. About five years ago, and said, I'm going to do it on my own. I don't care. I'm gonna, like this podcast was originally supposed to be done with somebody. He never showed up. Screw it. Did it. I said I'm going to do it anyway, you know. And I I don't know what my where I'm going with it or whatever it is, but I know that this is why I like to talk. I like to meet people, and um, so some odd reason people like to listen to me. So if I can just combine them, and till I figure out what works, and so be it, you know. But I'm gonna do it, even if I'm gonna have ten listeners a week, or eventually have you know a, a thousand listeners a week, whatever it is, you know. I'm it's, gonna... only, it's only gonna grow, man. Just keep, just stick at it. Whatever you're doing, stick at it. And any intention is is. Is good attention, I guess. It's not that it's not a vanity thing at all. It's 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 the fact that you're proud of your product and you're being yourself and you want to put it out there. And if you know people want to listen and and come on board, then that would be great. And I mean, you like, do you have a, a product or anything like that that you can monetize or sell? Yeah, I have my I, pa- I have my paintings and my my. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, surely business is picked up. With uh, the the growth of your podcast and your and your and your um, Instagram page and things like that. Yeah, I'm actually right. using the podcast to piggyback all the other stuff, which is kind of odd because they're not even related. Um, but yeah, like it's like it's just just an extension of if you listen, if someone was to listen to me, they're gonna understand where my influences come from. My other stuff, you know, is one thing to see for me. It's one thing to see somebody do something like I could watch you be an athlete, watch you train all day, never watch your your reaction videos and always think you're one way you're just this bodybuilder who loves rugby and can break it down really well but when you see your personality come out in your reaction videos it changes it It, you can understand you can understand the passion that goes into those other things now you know what i'm so i i i i I pinched myself man (laughs) i'm so glad that i decided to pick up my balls i've said it before put myself out there be myself you know, accept the trolls that were going to come. There's, there's, and they're few and far between. I must say, I'm very lucky. You are lucky. The comment section is extremely positive. It's awesome. 
Um, but yeah, I had to I had to make that choice, and I could never have imagined that this would happen. You know, it's 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 still unbelievable. I'm pinching myself, mate. It's it's awesome, and I mean, it's only fifty thousand. Like, it's not it's not huge amounts of numbers, but I think if I just keep Keep doing what I'm doing. Keep being myself. Keep grinding. Not put too many videos out too often, which is my freaking struggle right now because I've got so many that I've made. <laughs> um, I just don't want to piss anyone off, but you know, it I seems think that's that what's... everybody else is just getting a, a great reaction, and let's keep it going. Like, I'm, I'm having fun, man. I'm being myself, and I'm having fun, and that's the main that's thing. it. I mean, you can't like people will ask like, what's your standard thing? Like, you know, for podcasts once a week, for YouTube videos once a week. And for me, it's just like I'm trying to start off a branch off of my own podcast and, you know, have it twice a week because I'm sure people always want to hear me. I don't have that much, like, interviews to backlog, but there's other information I want to get out there, but other things that I enjoy doing that I want to get out there, too. You know, so it's just like I don't want to do that standard stuff, you know, and Joe Rogan doesn't do it. You know, he just every time he interviews someone, he goes up right instantly. You know, like I don't want to be like, oh, every Wednesday. Right now I'm every Tuesday. You know, but I want to get to the point where, like, I did something's going up. This is going up. That I will never put anything up on the weekend. It's the only rule I have. I won't put anything up on the weekends because nobody pays attention around here on the weekends of anything. So it will actually really? hurt me. People don't listen to podcasts on the weekends. They're all doing stuff. Okay. People will listen to podcasts. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to work out what would be the best time to post uh, a video or two per day. But I'm sort of um, – um, obviously, with the time difference, it's I'm going to bed. I'm posting a video for you guys to wake up to. So Yeah. Um, I don't know. Would you say in the morning or, or at night would be my best bet? At, n- at night, because this well, I had to figure out, like, even on Instagram, when the best time to post was. You know, like, Tuesday afternoons yeah. at 11 o'clock are the best time for me to post. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's the most popular time in Thursdays. But um, <clears throat> as far as your videos... Well, it's, awesome that they have, it's awesome that they have stats and, and um, analytics like that to, to, to look yeah. at. I mean, you and I, that kind of brain, it's, it's perfect for yeah. us. Yeah, so. and, and I was able to actually, you know... Like I found out they had those things. I'm like, well, I gotta figure this out for myself. So I did it, you know, and getting comparisons or whatever else. So like my podcast, I realize a podcast people listen to them in traffic. Students listen to it in between classes, you know, and things like that. So when were the situations? Right, you know what I mean? Right. I'm jealous. I'm jealous because I'd love to be in your position to host a podcast one day. Oh, I mean, you absolutely so will get you're the inspiring, chance. Man. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I'm sure one day you'll be. You know, I, 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 I know this won't be the last time I have you on here anyway. Um, right. For yours, like me personally, like I get home, like if I'm out all day and I get down to my studio, I, listen, I, I watch the videos while I paint. And so that's usually for me, it'd be four o'clock in the afternoon ish. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's usually when people get stuck at home from work. And I have you on notification, so I always get, it always shows up on my computer. Oh, um, and it shows up in my email, which is I, I, yours is the only one who actually shows up in my email. It's weird. But, um, <laughs> I don't know how that. Happens. I don't either, but it, it tells me every time. Um, but I, yeah, it always shows up in my my home screen on my computer. Um, so those are the times that I watch. But most people, well, I think podcasts. I think, man, podcasts um, are the the way things are going. I think I love I love them, man. If I've got a topic that I want to research, it hasn't been well. You know, if I was if I was doing this football thing off camera, I'd be listening to podcasts because if I've ever got a topic or a subject or something I want to learn, I will be doing my day-to-day task, whether it's washing or cleaning up or mopping the floor, doing the dishes, whatever. I'll have a podcast in my ears. Yeah, I do the same it's, thing. It's a waste of time otherwise. Seriously, yeah. that's how I feel. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I look at everything. That people, actually, it's funny because a lot of people, and I bring this up all the time, for example, a lot of people ask why I wake up so early and why I rarely sleep. And I was just like, because there's so many other things I could be doing, even if it's just thinking or listening to somebody yeah. else or reading. It's if I'm not taking the opportunity to learn something or do something, then I'm wasting time. And that's just the way if I have to that's accomplish feel, it. Man. You know, it's yeah. it, that's it with the podcast. But you, you do have to get some sleep, bro. Oh no, I do, I do. <laughs> I, I nap. I'm a napper. I like napping in the afternoon. I, I don't function well between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. I hate it. My least favorite time of day. <laughs> can't stand it never could like it there's nothing that goes on i don't give a shit about it you know i don't i don't know if it came from my coaching days because i didn't start coaching until three o'clock in the afternoon i hated the anticipation of waiting to coach because i love coaching so much but i can't do it between one (laughs) between one and three p.m i can't 
I can't do it. But as far as you, like I said, for you and your videos and people around here, most people I'm, I'm assuming are on, are on um, YouTube. If they're college kids, they can be anywhere, you know, uh, from, you know, first thing in the morning and then late in the afternoon at night um, watching, you know, but everything in between, they're in classes. If they're people who have normal jobs, I don't know your, your, your diet, your, um, your, uh, your age group. But, you know, at night is the time when everybody's on it, you know, watching it, watching them. I watch on my computer, so I don't know. I don't really – I do watch YouTube channels on my phone, but I'd rather watch your videos on um, my computer, you know, certainly. Well, you know, all, as, as you know, man, all of those analytics, all that data I get. So uh, probably – I'd say it's probably about 60%, 70% on a phone, maybe, maybe even 80% yeah. um, looking at them on the phone. So I need to be aware of things like that, you know. So that's, that's made me – realize that I need to pump up the sound a little bit on some videos because on, on phones, unless, you li unless you're listening to headphones, and that's what I would say to anyone, I'd recommend if you're going to listen to something on your phone, listen through, a listen through headphones, yeah. but as you are aware, I'm sure. But um, yeah, just knowing that and then realizing, shit, I've got to make the sound a little bit higher so that people can, can hear this. But then I've got this issue where I'm, I'm grabbing the audio from the camera that's sitting there, so it's picking up the audio coming through my computer speakers as well as me speaking. So it's it's not the best audio to be honest. And and moving forward, I'm going to have to sort of um, change it yeah. somehow. I don't know how, but that's just that's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? Yeah, With anything I mean, you've got to make changes. <laughs> as, as we learned when I started off this podcast, I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Yeah. Um, I know what you mean, but like, uh, yeah, with yours, I mean, you just have to buy a mic and you're good, and you rec record your yeah, audio di uh, differently. It, it seems so. It seems so. It's 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 oh, it's fucking amazing, man. I, I, that's what it is. It's amazing to me that just being yourself, having fun, has created such a, a, a great audience. It's, it's Wait, you know what? It's it's it, that's one of those things where, as an example, me as a photographer, um. My most of my work is all word of mouth, and has always been that way because of there was I had a girlfriend who was a photographer in at one point, and she was very professional, amazing to work with, an amazing photographer. But she was the photographer, and then she was her, and it, it wasn't much different, but it sounded different. So when people mm -hmm. you know would come to me, and I mostly photograph females, they come to me. I wasn't I was kind of like that, and I was just like. I couldn't do it because it would affect my outcome of my work. So I was just like, I just got to be me 100%. If I have something mean to say, then I will say something mean um, or whatever they consider yeah. it. But I had to be me. And it, by being that way, I got way better response from my clients and the girls that came to me because they didn't want to be, well, not all of them, but 99% of them, I'll say, because I wasn't going to sugarcoat how attractive they were because i don't care they are clearly here for that reason you know so i learned that about myself too was that being me in that way and being me on this podcast is what people like because they get they don't they, they can see whatever i type for a comment or a comment back and thanking people versus hearing me actually say what i say because i don't hold any punches and that's what why people have been friends with me supposedly for so long is because i never gave a shit and i still don't you know, so that's my attitude that helped for me. You know what I mean? I'm not the happy-go-lucky dude, but I'll have fun with you. But I'm going to swear. I'm going to tell you what's up. I don't care about really what anybody much thinks all the time, you know? And it worked. And you're right. You were so right. You know? And that's what enhanced your, your videos now, for me at least, have enhanced all your other ones before. I feel like that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I never had an opportunity to be myself, you know, to, I, I don't know, just... This is and it's a, it's a it's a subject I'm passionate about, man. As you guys know, I mean, this is I love looking up speeds. I love looking up. I'll, I'll I will like and I and I, I guess I have put a bit of a unique spin on it in the fact that I don't just watch a video. If I see something I want to know about, I will research it, and that's exactly what I'd do if I was sitting at home without the camera on. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, it's uh, I'm having as I keep saying, man. I'm just having fun, and this this whole journey, man. This whole journey will become will will go full circle. When I suit up and have a run <laughs> in a game. Well, <laughs> not, well, not, I, not any particular game, but just somewhere.